Hello and welcome to The Real Talk. Today we're going to talk about marriage. Something that people make fun of about marriage is that the people on the inside look at those on the outside and they want to join them. And then the ones on the outside are constantly looking at the people on the inside and they want to go there. Marriage is a mystery. This, on this particular show, we are talking about marriage to somebody that I believe is very experienced. Welcome to the show. Welcome to The Real Talk. It's coming to you from Mythos Boutique Hotel in Kiovu. Our guest is a renowned and a man that actually does not need to be introduced. Something tells me that a lot of you that are watching already know Pastor Hassan Chibirango. Although today I want him to take off that pastor cap and <laughs> we will call him a leadership development consultant. He's also an author. He's a dotting husband, a loving father. It is so good to have you with us, son. Yeah, I was waiting for the invitation, Jackie. Gla you glad know, it came through. And I'm, I'm so glad that you said yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've you know, been seeing you doing great things and yeah. I'm like, you know. In Kinyaranda, yeah. we say Avandivana, which is uh, mm. other children. Other children, yeah. <laughs> like, Mungu me mwone kania. God has on a kania at me and yes. he's not yet got it. In. Yes, but I'm so no. proud of you and what you're doing. Thank you so much. Yeah. I thank God. Yeah, mm. a lot of good things have been mm -hmm. happening lately. Yeah. I'm surprised myself. <laughs> thank you for coming through. Sure, yeah? pleasure. Is all good with you? Absolutely. Absolutely. We thank God for yeah. that. I'm great. Pastor Hassan, um, how long have you been married? Let's start there, because you're here today, not talk about any other thing, yeah. but marriage. Uh -huh. How long have you been married, and uh, what went into preparation for that particular phase? Um, In fact, it would also be nice to know at what age you got married. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been married uh, 15 years. 31st of May, my wife and I made 15 years in marriage. And uh, I, we were very young when we got married. When we got married, we were, she was 22 years and I was 24 years. We graduated university in January of 2008 and we got married in May. <laughs> Why the rush? Yeah. <laughs> now, who, who was asking you guys to pay rent? Most, <laughs> Your it's, parents, it's, that mean. It's, it's the most foolish thing I ever did and the wisest thing I ever did at the same time. Uh -huh. You know, kind of like the paradox you talked about how People on the outside want to get in and on the inside want to get out. Yeah. In fact, somebody said that uh, when it comes to marriage or wanting to run out of marriage, the concept of the grass is always greener on the other side, <laughs> even when yours is being watered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes yeah. marriage is like that. So, so my story is quite unique in the sense that um, I was finishing university back in Uganda and I had visited Rwanda a couple of times and I had made a resolution to move to Rwanda. I was already dating a girl at the university. So in our second year, I came to Rwanda 2007, mm -hmm. the very first time. Then I went back, I told her, hey, you know, I'm moving to Rwanda indefinitely. I'm going to start business there and live there. We've been dating. I don't want to long distance date. So I have a few savings and I have some friends that can contribute. Let's graduate, get married, and go to Rwanda together. <laughs> no way. And then I, I put oh a spanner God. in the works. I told her, you know, I've also been to Rwanda a couple of times, and there are some beautiful girls in Rwanda. <laughs> so I kind of like twisted yes. her arm. <laughs> no, but... Um, yeah. And how long had you been dating by the time you told her this? So by the time we got married, we were dating two and a half years. Okay. We had, we had dated two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, she... Um, Again, we had built a solid foundation of our friendship. We had a support system. And for me, there was really no reason to delay this. And um, so it worked in my favor in the sense that um, I married my high school, my university sweetheart, sorry. And uh, it's been a good journey nonetheless. So what I'm wondering is, yeah. in the two and a half years that you are dating, yeah. were you doing it with the intention of marrying her or... You know, you're, you're in university and please, mm. we, we just date for dating scene. Yes. But it seems to have been really focused on Absolutely. making this permanent. Absolutely. Now, without boring you with my life story. No, I, I love I life through, story. <laughs> I went through a very, really difficult childhood where I had to grow up fast. I was taking care of my siblings. I was working. I started working at 16. Even at mm. that time when we were dating at the university, I was running a business. So I never got the chance to play games. You, you know what I mean? Because I had to mature so fast. So for me, everything had to have the end goal in mind, including dating. So when I started dating her, um, 
And I remember it must have been on our second date. I had to lay my CV down. I told her, look, this is not short run. I'm looking at the long haul. And um, if you put in the work and I put in the work, I really want to get married. Yeah, so I, I was very blatant and forward with my request at the beginning. Now, I know that's not how it's done no, usually. Yeah. People have to test and say, hey, is this the one? Is this not the one? Ah, okay, this one is not the one. Date person number two. And yeah, yeah because it's, it's, it's different for different people. So you really dated the one person that you married? Yes, at the university. The one person that I married. How, how has that been? Because, again, we are encouraged to do a little bit of sampling. Explore. Please, some. exactly. It's not a scene <laughs> yeah. to explore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how has this worked for you? Now, the reason why most people explore is that um, they're not sure what they're getting into. And some are dragged by the bandwagon and, and, and peer pressure. But, you know, I keep telling people, look, if you sample so many people, explore so many people, at the end of the day, you're going to come back, even to that one person that you end up getting into union with, you will have highlighted a few things that you like about them. So rather than break a few hearts, why shouldn't that be your motive at the beginning? Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, but I also understand that marriage has gotten a bad rap because of, you know, there's so many things around it and people are not sure, which I get. Yeah, but um, the most important phase uh, before marriage is, is the dating phase. Yeah. yeah, and the most important person you need to work on is you. you Not know? the other person. Not the other person. Is you. Um, and I keep telling people, if you were to date you for marriage, would you marry you? You know? Because you see, the thing, Jackie, is that we always put our lenses on and looking at the person we want. They have to yeah. do this, they have to be this, they have to have achieved this. But are you those things? Are you the things that you... Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> you know, I, I love where you're going yeah. with this. Are because you? indeed... We, yeah. we don't do look at ourselves. Do you embody the, values, that, the, values the you're qualities looking for that in the you're other looking person. for? Many people are not. Many people are looking like uh, this glass. They are like half a glass and they're looking for somebody to fill them up. Yeah? And for many people, I, I usually say they have an emotional glass or bucket that has holes in it. And unless those holes are bandaged, you can never be filled up. So the water will be going you. in and uh, yeah. out. Yeah. So, so, so work on you. It's a very, very important principle. I have a friend who wrote a book about relationships. And it's, mm -hmm. I remember the opening line of that book was that people get into marriage for different reasons mm -hmm. with different expectations. And a lot of marriages do fail because couples don't sit to merge the expectations, yeah. to synchronize them. I wonder if you agree mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. But also, um, for you, mm -hmm. you went in yeah. and at a very young age of 24, yeah. have your expectations of marriage been met? <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, m my case is not a cookie cutter for everybody. I, um, my wife and I walk a journey with very many people who are going through either a divorce or they're in broken marriages. So I, I really wouldn't want to sit here and say, and kind of elevate uh, marriage yeah. as, a, as a case for everybody. But I will say this, my expectations have been exceeded. <laughs> They've been exceeded. Again, our, our unique story and our unique journey is that um, when, when I met Joanne, my wife, um, I found her uh, in a place where she had a very strong support system. You know, she was grounded in her faith. Um, in fact, it's interesting. So my name is Hassan. I grew up in a Muslim background. Yeah. So when I joined university, I'd just become a Christian. And I met this girl at the university who were doing the same course. And... Um, so I got interested in her, started pursuing, and I noticed that her entire life was around her friends and her church, and she was a church girl, quote unquote. And I started following her to church, and that place was, was a marriage preparation center. So she was very well prepared for it, uh, because they were building the reserve, the, the reserve of her, her, her character. They were helping her to develop a balanced emotional life and all those things. So for me, I came in and uh, she was wow. quite prepared for it. Um, but that doesn't happen for, for many people. So that is why I would say 15 years down the road, we've been building on the principles we learned, but keeping, adding on to a few other things mm -hmm. that uh, like we, we walk an accountability journey with a mentor couple. 
We've been doing that for the last, maybe you'd say nine years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have peer You're accountable to that couple. Yes, to that couple. We have peer couples. Uh, the accountability couple have been married 23 years. We have peer couples that we work with. So, so the thing is, we are very intentional in uh, being in spaces where marriages are thriving so you can learn from them so that you build on yours. And the challenge is, Jackie, many people in marriage do not do the work. They don't do the work, okay? And again, because the expectations, either they were misconstrued or when they came into this thing, the expectations changed. Yeah, but marriage is work. It's and, just and, like, and it's work from, from the get-go? From the get-go. It is work, you don't and the work to get to never sit. stops, and there is no graduation. Yeah, you graduate when you, till death, when that thing happens, you're in the box with makeup on you, and everyone is viewing your body. That's when you graduate from marriage. <laughs> As then you say the work never stops. It and never. And yet, there's also a lot of complacency in marriage. Yeah. I know lots of men and women that will work on themselves a lot before mm. they get in, because mm. they're, they're trying to hook this yeah. person, and they will get married two years, three years down the road. They get comfortable, because now, after all, I bagged the prize. Like, I, mm. This person is here. Yeah. But you're saying that the work never ends. It mm. means we should never get to a point where we take each other for granted, where we yeah. get too comfortable. Mm. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. And, and I like the analogy you say, you know, I bag the price. <laughs> Marriage is never a price to contend for. Okay? Marriage is not uh, like a goal to achieve. Marriage is a journey to walk. Okay? And it has different phases. Because once you've bagged the marriage thing, you've put the ring on him, then what? Have you arrived? No, actually, you've just gotten started, right? So, so I, I believe that there has to be perspective, uh, and perspective has to be for the both, both of the people who get into marriage. And um, the thing about marriage is, the reason why it's complicated, by the way, our first year of marriage was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop it there. didn't sound like you had yeah. anything no, 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 it was marriage. horrible. <laughs> Why? Because I loved this girl to death before I married her. She lived with her folks. I lived on my own. Then we got married and the girl went, started getting into my space. And I did not like that because I was an independent <laughs> guy. I came in when I wanted. You know, I was doing me, right? Yeah. yeah. And then I continued doing me and my own life. Mm -hmm. And there's somebody that I'm fully accountable for. So that journey of compatibility was very difficult. It's like trying to place as a, a round peg into a square hole. It was really, really difficult. And uh, that's when soon enough we realized, oh, oh, wait a minute. You know, this, this is now the thing. This is the fire. We need to get help. And we screamed for help. We screamed for help. I remember at my church, CLA, every year they hold marriage retreats, marriage conferences. I mean, we were always the first to sign up because we wanted to be in a space where we needed help. Because I was like, why is, how come the person I love the most is hurting me the most? You know? Yeah. Uh, and, and she would say the same for me. She yeah. loved me a lot. And, and I, I, it's just natural. The people you love the most hurt we'll, you We'll the most. also hurt you the most. <laughs> And yeah. you mentioned seeking help because I think the other problem that couples uh, really deal with is yeah. that denial. They're, they're in mm. denial. They, things are not going on well, but they're also not seeking help from the outside. Yeah. So it's them, the two of them quarreling with each other mm. and uh, you know, hating each other yeah. without actually looking for help. Would you tell couples mm. to expose their problems mm. to the outside? But also, how should they go about yeah, that? Yeah, thank you. That's a very good question, Jackie. And, and, and really, that's where the rubber hits the road. Because we live in a culture of impressionism, a culture of trying to pervade that things are OK, and things are bad behind the scenes, right? So seeking help in marriage and finding people you work with should not be a reactive remedy when things go wrong. We should have it as a posture of understanding that uh, it is how life and marriage is done. So it should not be reactive. We should be proactive about it. In fact, you start finding people to journey with, to help you with marriage, before things go wrong. Okay? <laughs> but again, um, I also understand that, you know, in our societies that you, you don't want to wash your dirty linen in public. No. So, so seek people who have a sense of, um, they've built a character base 
that can hold your confidence as a couple and can walk with you. Everyone knows someone in your family or in your group of friendships or for us who are faith people in your church in your or church. other people in, in your social settings that you, you can trust to walk with you. Build a relationship with them and say, look, we've been watching your journey of marriage. Things seem to be well. Uh, please show us, help us navigate this thing so that we, we can anticipate the pitfalls before they come, you know? That, mm. That's called an anticipatory mindset. Marriage should be embodied with an anticipatory mindset because things, if things can go wrong, they will go, wrong. go wrong. Yeah. So for many people, they try to handle it on themselves and then things go bad and then they try to cover up. And before you know it, a few months in, a few years in, they're like, you know what, I'm done with this. Yeah. But you don't have to be done with it. Today you are pastoring a whole church with many young people, many old people. I wondered what you asked them during marriage. What are they called? Marital counseling? Premarital. Premarital. Yeah. We do premarital. Yes, so premarital counseling. Yeah. What sort of questions do you ask them? Mm. Or also what questions should they be asking themselves oh, wow. as they get ready for this union? Mm. <laughs> so number one is, so in an organizational setting in our church, we, we have a class. It's, it's a two-week class, if you will, or premarital course, if you will, because it's a big church. There are many people getting married at any given time. It's, it's difficult to walk a journey with one person. Um, and in those eight weeks, we deal with a couple of things that are important for married people to know or for people to know before they get married. Mm -hmm. By the way, we've had situations where we've taken them through that class and they've come to a realization that, you know what, based on what we've learned, we are not ready for this. Uh -huh. we, need to build, uh, we need to build some more or, you know, work on us. And some people have realized oh, we're so actually not compatible a... at all. Okay. Now, there, are, there are really few, but I really, really honor such people. Yeah. Because rather than get into this thing because of different reasons that, that, that are... Just because you've gone through the yeah, course yeah, together. Yeah, gone through the course. So, so, so it's a class. And we deal with things like, um, you know, like money. How do you handle finances? Statistically, the number one reason people divorce is money. Then secondly is, is infidelity. So we deal with how do you deal with, um, with if you find that your spouse has been nurturing an emotional relationship or what do we, they call it an emotional affair yeah. or an adulterous affair. How do you deal with that? We deal with how do you resolve conflict because you are going to conflict in marriage. Okay. How do you handle in-laws and extended family? <laughs> Yeah? Those are some Those, of the questions I was going to ask. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. How do you deal with your sexual intimacy life? Mm -hmm. Because um, that is another area that um, needs to be taught. Um, you know, so we have many couples, seasoned couples that come and train you from... There's a, there's a course, but it comes from their own life experience as well. Mm -hmm. So in a way, people ask themselves that those questions, they do assignments, and those classes help. But they are not remedies. They are not, you have to continue doing the work. Those prepare you, but they are not the all in all that because I did the class, things will be okay. well. You asked a very good question. Uh, what question should we ask? Usually when my wife and I are journeying with a couple, we ask them to consider four Fs before they get married. Number one is faith. Faith is important to me. And for me, it's a, it's a foundation for marriage. Um, what is their faith? What do they believe? And are you compatible in your faith? The second one is fundamentals. And fundamentals is just fundamental values. There are certain values, Jackie, that you will never bend for any single person, right? Yes. So do, does this person embody those values? So that's the second F. The third F is friends. The easiest way to tell who this person is is the friends they keep and the crowd they, they run around with. I'm telling you, you can, you can know if they are a good person or if they are they're not somebody material, uh, marriage material because of their friends. They're looking at their friends. Yeah. And then the final one is family. Now, family comes last on my list because um, it is not always the indicator that whether you should marry somebody or not. Somebody can yeah. come from a broken, dysfunctional family, and they're still marriage material. But it's important for you to know someone's family so that you can know how to support them emotionally, how to deal with their family once you get into marriage. Uh, don't, don't go in blind spotted about someone's family and them knowing your family. Mm -hmm. Now, most people struggle in marriage because they have emotional issues that that they've not that have not dealt with 
and really because of family. So just knowing that, you know your person. You know that uh, they didn't grow up with, a, with both parents. They were an orphan, for example. Um, how can you support them? So just arming yourself with that knowledge is a very good thing. So the four Fs for me are like quick indicators of uh, whether somebody, those are the questions. Mm. And whatever questions you ask the other person, yeah. you should be able to positively answer those questions for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. If not you not expect what you're not willing to give. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are the questions we ask them to <coughs> ask themselves and each other. When we come back, I would love as, you know, for the people that go through your counseling sessions are better prepared. Mm -hmm. But there could be somebody who's watching us and yeah. they've just gotten into it. Mm -hmm. Is there room for them to start on this training <laughs> while they're already there? Thank you for watching The Real Talk. And if you want to talk to Pastor Hassan or myself, you have a question or a comment, please drop that somewhere online. We will find it as long as you use the hashtag The Real Talk. Welcome back to The Real Talk. We are coming to you from Mythos Boutique Hotel in Kiovu. And whenever you find time, you feel like you want to eat out, try out the new menu at the Atmosphere Restaurant, talk to us. If you have a question or a comment, please send it through. We will respond to it. So Hassan, there are people that are watching the program and mm -hmm. they're not members of your church. Yeah. In fact, probably they don't even belong yeah, to any to church. Any. Yes. They've met and they've decided after a few dates, and a few kisses, mm. we are good to go. Mm -hmm. mm? Mm. Is there room for a couple like that to now start the learning process while already inside? Mm. Huh. Mm. Absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> and how would they then start? <laughs> Number one is th th we live in an information age where there is such a plethora of information. They can watch videos, they can read books, they can go to seminars. Not all marriage seminars are church seminars. Uh, but they have, it has to come from a place of both of you making a conscious decision that um, our marriage needs, needs work. Uh, you don't put a ring on it and then everyone goes and does their own life. After putting a ring on it, you realize that there are certain responsibilities as a husband that I have over you as my wife. You as my wife have certain responsibilities and obligations that you need to play that build this marriage, okay? And this marriage is something you build the both of you. And because it's a very intricate, difficult institution, because it's highly emotive for people, it's an, it's an emotional roller coaster for people. People give up easily. Um, if, if I make a mistake because I didn't understand that, um, that I hurt your feelings, um, how you respond to that could lead to something else. And yeah. so it's, 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 um, it's, it's a very difficult space. That is why we constantly need help. Mm. Now, um, you get married and life continues. You get people to join your family, children. Um, I have to deal with your family, which is my in-laws. You have to deal with my family, which are in-laws. And when I fell in love, I fell in love with you. Okay, and I didn't know that behind you were all these other responsibilities. So there are ways to deal with all those issues. There's information out there. There is information, Jackie. There is information. We yeah. should never... Seek knowledge. Uh, seek knowledge. There is knowledge, enough knowledge mm. to arm you with. The problem is we give up so quick, and, um, and, and that is not... It's, it's, I wouldn't advise that. Yeah. From Try. where you stand today, because lots of marriages are struggling. We are living in times when, for sure, when a marriage goes beyond two years, mm -hmm. hey, that's like jubilee. <laughs> <laughs> jubilee it's celebrations. 15 years in my case would be what? It's a platinum. <laughs> platinum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I hear you. From where you stand, yeah. Hassan, how should a couple deal with the issue of money, mm. women empowerment, mm -hmm. and 
hunting and surviving as a mm. couple because we're not living in those days where the man would be doing everything in a home. Mm. Today, a man expects that the woman will chip in, mm. but the man also expects that this woman will remain as submissive. Mm. They will both come from work, but then yeah. him, he'll just sit there and throw his socks yeah. there and the woman has to come and pick the socks. Yeah, and if she socks, doesn't do that, yes. And then socks. bring dinner. And bring dinner. And then sex after that. And sex after <laughs> that. Man, that's too much, you know? <laughs> too much pressure on one person. Too much pressure on yeah. one person. What would you say about it? Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, those two components of marriage are two, like we could have a, an entire show on money and an entire show on women empowerment. But I will say this, Jackie. Number one is that um, we need to revisit why, the why of marriage. Okay? So though marriage in some sense is, is transactional, it's a give and take, it, it, it was never meant to be largely give and take because if I give and you don't give in equal measure, that then what? Yeah. Right? What yeah. We we have different strengths, we have different abilities, and we bring those to marriage to be able to complement and complete one another. So the reason why money is the number one issue um, is that we, we came into marriage with the wrong view around finances and marriage. We were never taught. Or nobody modeled it for us. Now um, and again, we come back, we, we all have a financial blueprint and template from our past. If I grew up with a father who uh, was always verbalizing the fact that there was never money, yet he was always in the bar with his friends, you know, it becomes um, edged up in us to, 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 be, to be hoarders and, and to be stingy with money. So that, you, you know, and, and we, are, we, are, we have a different relationship with money. Some men you, <clears throat> are frugal, and you marry a spendthrift. Thrift. Yeah. And usually, we marry the opposite. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know, so or you find a guy who is a spender, and the woman was brought up with a single mom, and everything was tight, and so you to have to it. count every coin. Number one is we need to understand our financial blueprints and dynamics, and support each other. If you're a spendthrift, for you, everything you get will have to be spent, because mm. uh, what's it called? Uh, FOMO or no? Uh, you only live once, YOLO. Yolo. Yeah? <laughs> if if you're, you come from the YOLO generation where you only live once, let's, let's spend it. And I come from the generation or oh, the blueprint of saying we have to save, we have to help each other. Because there's, a, there's an element of frugality that can become, uh, what, inconsistent with the joys of life. Mm. Where all you're doing is seeing a bank account but you can't touch but it. But you're not even yeah, enjoying, that's, that's you're, not, you're not leaving. That's a, that's, that's a certain sickness that needs to be. Mm. And then on the other hand, you can't eat everything you make. How about the future? How about the children? How about, you know? Mm. So balancing each other out on the, marriage, uh, on the money front is very, very important. The other thing about money is that um, I find that, again, depending on how we were raised, most of what plays out in marriage, Jackie, stems Comes from, from our childhood. It stems from the, okay. You know? You grew up, and you saw your father, in, in most of our fathers, our generation, our fathers were pretty much the only breadwinners. Moms stayed at home, right? Mm. So you grow up seeing that, and then you bring that into your marriage. You've married um, a, a data scientist, a, an engineer, a lawyer who wants to thrive. And by the way, this happened to me. When I married Joanna, I wanted Joanna to stay home uh -huh. because I was running a business and I, I could take care of her. And I was like, what are you fussing about? And I just saying I went to university, I, my yes, friend. Yes, exactly. I, I, I want to take <laughs> care of you. I can just stay home. And, uh, and this girl told me, look, I went to school for all these years. I graduated, you know, with honors. I want to put my degree to use. And again, my, my template background is my dad took care of us. And for me, it was an honorable thing. And I felt she would appreciate it. It was a cause of conflict. Yeah. Until I, I understood, again, with people helping us that, this girl has a life and a career to build, and if I deny her that, it's going to cost my marriage, you know? So I had to let her go and, and, and work. So, so, again, help, 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 help. Now, when it comes to women empowerment, Jackie, uh. I don't even know how to come around that question. And again, the reason do, do, why... Do you agree that it's become... Whereas it, it's a very good thing, is it yeah. also a source of trouble? It is a source of trouble. Why... Is it is because again we were raised wrong, we were raised wrong. We live in a different day and age. Okay, I have three daughters. I'm giving them the best education possible. 
once these girls, uh, they go to the best universities, God willing, find good jobs, I would want them to thrive in their career. And I would want them to use that for it to be a blessing in their marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no one expects uh, to invest heavily in the education of your daughter and to empower her to be a thriving citizen of a nation only for that to be a problem to the man that she marries. Okay, so we need to heal from our past. We need to know that we live in a different dispensation altogether. And um, let me tell you, if my girl... There's a time during COVID, by the way, I was transitioning jobs mm. and I didn't, have, um, I didn't have income for six months. My wife is a businesswoman and the girl took care of us. And I <laughs> wow. sat there. And, and, uh, it was the most for beautiful thing. For six months, I was, she was just really paying the bills. Uh -huh. And I, you know, I, because her business is, is, was at home then, I supported her. You know, I, I'm not doing anything. Yeah. She was, she's one of the best bakers in, in, in town. Mm -hmm. So I supported her. I, I did some you, cake yeah, mixing. And, uh, and I was never, I didn't feel like my manhood was diminishing because, again, I had a healthy view of these things. But, again, not everyone is a Hassan. Most men, um, most men are emotionally and historically bent towards this whole subservient a view of marriage, and, and that, is, that ship has sailed. Yeah. yeah, You are going to lose your wife if you subjugate. But on the other hand, Jackie, it's important for the girls to understand as well that uh, there's a dynamic and there's an expectation in marriage. Uh, men instinctively, we were wired and created to take care of you, the women. Yeah. It's, it's an instinctive wiring. And uh, even if you make more money than me, Bless the Lord. Even if you, you know, you, you're out there doing great things, when you come home, adjust. Adjust. This shouldn't be a tool to wallop your guy down that, you know, hey, you know, I, I, can, I can do this, so don't... Uh, I'm the one paying rent. Yeah, I'm the one paying rent. Um, again, it scratches our ego so bad. And our, our number one need from a wife as men, believe it or not, men will care to tell you all they want, is respect. That's our love language. The love language for a man is spelled R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Every man craves it. In fact, they crave it. It's, it's, it's right up there with oxygen. And when your empowerment trumps this respect thing, and respect is mutual, by the way, but for us, it's our core need. Your core need is love and affection. That's what makes you breathe and thrive. And I should be able to speak your love, your, your language, by loving you, taking care of you, affirming you, being affectionate. All you need to do is respect me, and we are good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you this. <laughs> yeah. I'll paint a scenario. So there's this woman who mm -hmm. probably comes from a family where I'm the first one in a family of five. Yeah. And so for a very long time, I have worked mm. to take care of this family. I'm not married today, but I have taken care of children. I've yeah. been a parent. You've been a parent. I've been a parent. Yeah. And... I have never had anyone take care of me, hmm. you know? Hmm. <laughs> hey, I have not had anyone pay my rent, hmm. even once. Nobody has bought me a pair of shoes. <laughs> then somebody comes from somewhere yeah. and marries me. Hmm. High flyer. Trust me, unless they give me a building, unless yeah. they give me like Kigali Heights, <laughs> eh? don't expect me to just respect you. I hear you. You, you, you know, eh? I hear you. Will I be at fault? Yeah. Like surely, hmm. first husband, I'm not going yeah. to be there <laughs> nursing you yeah, and yeah, yeah. No, you, no, you're no. not going to be my firstborn yeah. <laughs> when I have taken care of a whole family behind yes, there. Yes, 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 yes. How, how will we, cause I, and, and I'm yeah. saying this because I know I will be a very difficult wife if <laughs> I ever, <laughs> if I ever get there, yeah. I know it will be very difficult mm. because I've never been in a place where I was taken care of yeah. and I do not want, I don't imagine. Yeah that I will get to a place where a guy just expects me to respect them because they're a man. Yeah. No, I hear no. you. I hear you. Yeah. We've and uh, this is really like, um, it. this is, it should be like a dance and a rhythm. That's why conversation is important. Okay. There is a primal wiring within you, a natural instinct within you that craves to be taken care of. Uh, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. you're a woman. Yeah. yeah. And now the man needs to know how to, unravel that without being intimidated by the, the powerhouse of a woman that you are. In fact, 
a man who is secure in and of himself should be able to push you to be even greater. Because that's how you feel loved. You feel loved when you are empowered by your man, when, you don't, when he doesn't feel intimidated by your success. But we all know that that's not how things run, okay? <laughs> Men, uh, literally, f their fuel is their ego. So there has to be a toning down of male ego, and also you, there has to be a toning down of mm. this, this sense of, I got this, I can pay my rent. That's, yeah, I mean, oh, I've been uh, taking care of everybody. You know, I'm not about to, you know, but <laughs> yeah. it There comes should be a toning down of that. Of each, knowing that right. as you mm. tone that down, you give him an opportunity to fill you up. As he tones his ego down, you, he gives you an opportunity to, um, to, to bring the respect, not in a way that, again, respect should never be demanded. Respect me, I'm the man. There's, there's an element of earning. And how a man earns respect is, is by reciprocating the affection and the love that he gives you. Mm. Every woman is a baby girl wanting to be cuddled and loved. And that I'm telling so you, true. you see these CEOs who are, you know, are powerhouse women. Yeah. You know, when she goes home, she wants to fall in the arms of that man and say, look. She wants that cuddle. Everyone. <laughs> well, and, and you see, for the man to earn the respect, he has to speak your language. Yeah and speak it, and usually, when I speak your language, when I speak my wife's language, she reciprocates by speaking my language. Mm. And it's a beautiful dance. You know, you're it's a beautiful it's, dance. And it, yeah, thank you. And yeah, and it it's, seems so this simple. Is never, I think we're the ones who complicate it, huh? We complicate it, yeah. and we learn from the, the wrong sources. Yeah, we, 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 mm. run, we, 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 we run all these TikTok videos, or, yeah. you know, and married. And watch all these telenovelas. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and, and those are not the, not the, the things real, that teach us the real marriage. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Considering you talk to a lot of people, and I know that there are those that come. I, I also have a few that will come to me uh -huh. for counseling because mm. I am very loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I know our loud counselor. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the loud counselor who even sometimes uses their experiences on radio and TV. <laughs> but they still come. But from your interaction with a lot of these people, why... Do you think marriages are failing today more than ever before? You're a guy. Instead of going and working on your marriage, you hit the bar every time you, you leave work. And those guys are people who, have, who go home at 3 a.m. in the morning, and they're the ones who give you counsel. What do you expect? They are going to feed your preconceived narrative about marriage. If the first thing you talk about to your friends is complain about your wife, they're going to feed that, OK? And with a bottle of beer, you're a little elated. What do you expect? Okay, so we are, again, and instinctively we are selfish. That's naturally, mm. you know. But there's a sense of wanting to learn and grow is you keep putting your selfishness at the altar of self-sacrifice, of selflessness, of seeing the other person. We have become blinded. We have blinders on. We no longer see the other person because me, my needs, what I want, ourselves. you know. So, so and, and that selfishness, Jackie, has been fueled with, a lot of opinions around marriage from the wrong sources. I am, I, I, I am not going to learn marriage from somebody who's who, bashing it, who, huh? is, who, who is married who really, mm. and they're talking about how things are difficult and how they want to get out because we all dealt a bad hand, mm. okay? But there are people out there, Jackie, believe you me, that are marriage bashers, okay? Mm -hmm. They're marriage bashers and if I'm married and I listen to a marriage basher, whether they're married themselves or they're divorced, what am, what, what, am, what am I feeding my soul? I'm feeding myself that these things don't work. You, you know, that's yeah. where I was coming at. Okay, yeah, it I, was, I it. wasn't it. about divorce yeah. at all. Mm. Um, because I know that um, not everything ends the way we planned. Sometimes mm. things have to end when there is violence and abuse and all these things. Yeah. You know, that is I someone be, you might want to listen that, to. That is, I will be the first to say, this is not a healthy marriage for you to mm. stay in. If somebody is abusing you physically, emotionally abusive. So it's, it's not about divorce. It's about people who are bitter towards marriage. You don't want us to entertain such people. Yeah, so, yeah. so take their advice Because still, still, marriage is still a beautiful thing. Mm. You know, like, like I, 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 and I love, I hear stories from both aisle sides of the aisle. Yeah. They will tell you very beautiful stories, and I yeah. love such beautiful stories. Mm. What I don't like are bad stories yeah. and also stories of perseverance. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> yes, I, I hate such yeah, stories. Yeah. No, don't I think tell me I'm persevering. Mm -mm. Authenticity is key. Yeah. yeah. Do I struggle in my marriage 15 years later? Absolutely. There are areas that I'm, I have to work on constantly. 
the areas that my wife keeps pointing at me says, you know, you're not doing well in that area. Okay? Now, if for me that is a cause for me to say, ah, you know, you woman, you don't, then I'm losing. I'm losing at this thing. She has my best interest at heart, or at least she should, to point out my flaws. And my flaws shouldn't be a punch in the face that uh, you're, you're dishonoring me. No, no, no. She sees me and my entire nakedness. Yeah. Yeah? The nakedness of my soul. She sees it. And she, she's my best marriage advisor. And so am I wow. to her. But for that to work well, the rhythm, the dance I talked about, the foundations have to be right. And we have to be seeking help from people who uh, have the right perspective and view on marriage. Because just like marriage has bashers, you see this water? Yes. Somebody can bash water and you won't take it for the rest of your life. You know? Um, it's important to know who yeah, you yeah, get to yeah. be advised from. You know, anything can yeah. have somebody to come and twist. And, but marriage was never meant to be uh, something we endure. It was never meant to be something we persevere through. It was meant to be something we enjoy arm in arm to thrive. and w thrive and walk towards yeah. that till death do our, do our part. Sex and infidelity. Mm. As a man, and we are told that men are naturally promiscuous and uh, mm. what's the other word? Polygamous. I'm wondering in those 15 years if you ever looked at somebody else and... Uh, Mm -hmm. You looked more than you should have looked. <laughs> <laughs> so again, but also, how can a couple deal yeah. with uh, infidelity? Mm. Somebody has gone yeah. out and they've been caught, mm. or sex. The sex is just not yeah. cutting it. Yeah. They go out and look for better. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and again, popular culture has fed us the narrative that men are naturally promiscuous, or you know what? What we need to understand is the psyche of men around sex. Okay. Our predisposition towards sex as men is different from women. Predisposition, now I don't mean behavior. It is, it is the wiring, right? Yeah. Now, men are highly visual, okay? And men's sexual buttons are turned on through their eyes predominantly. A woman's sexual buttons are turned on uh, through affection and care, okay? Now, I will say this. For men... A man emotionally connects to his wife, emotionally, during or after sex. Emotional connection for a man is as a result of sex. Uh -huh. Okay? Emotional connection for sex for a woman is a gift she gives you after she has connected with you emotionally. And I'm talking about primal wiring here. And of course, wow. things have changed over the years. Um, now, because of that, we need to understand that the need for sex for a man is higher than the need for sex for a woman. Okay. Okay? Mm. Wiring, primal. Now, a lot gets into marriage that it's jumbled up. Okay? Uh, popular culture, music videos, movies. Friends you know, with keep. Everything has been hyper-sexualized, yeah. whereby men feel like they're like dogs that need to be put on a leash. Yeah? So we need to put everything in its right perspective and context. Now, I, I don't know the reason why men cheat. Well, I know some of the reasons why men cheat, but I, know, I, don't, I don't know why they should cheat because of those reasons. Um, because there could be other ways to deal with those reasons. Yeah, and, and for me, again, perspective, perspective, perspective. If you take care of the girl's heart, if the girl takes care of you and, and, and what you deem right, you need to understand that both of you are sexual beings and sex is one of the gifts you give each other in marriage. It is not a reward. No, 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 no. no. It is a desire that brings both of you together. together. Mm -hmm. Now, when it's used as a, as a whip that, uh, you know, I won't give you sex, or if a man uses it to abuse and dis disregard his wife, mm -hmm. then we've you know, lost track. We've lost track. So, and I, that's an entire show we can, uh, I'll I guess, be back and we'll be talking about sex in marriage yeah, because um, yeah. there's a lot to talk well, about there. Okay. And a lot of abuse and infidelity has happened because of, again, the wrong view. What is your favorite day of the week? <laughs> <laughs> that's an that's interesting question and it's cliche. I'm gonna give a cliche answer and you know why, right? Yeah. So my favorite day is Monday. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So the cliche is I've written a book about Bill Monday. Gates. Yeah, I know you have. And um, the reason I love people, well, I love Monday is, is, is perhaps the opposite of why people hate Monday. I'm a very passionate yeah. person about work. And I wrote about Monday, so I have to love the yeah, day. To, we, will, we will talk about, we will go deeper into detail with the, about the book and sure. your love for Monday. If you are not pastoring today, what would you be doing? Oh, wow. I've always loved to be a lawyer. I used to watch series uh, on law, Boston Legal, and I yeah. love the suits and the argument. And as you can tell, I can be quite argumentative. Yeah. So my other world, I'd be, I'd lawyer. be a lawyer. Yeah. Wow. And then um, the values of hard work. And I already know this, but <laughs> because of the viewer who yeah. taught you the values of hard work, yeah. I know that there's somebody you talk about quite passionately in the yeah, book. Yeah, in, in the book. So in the book, I talk about my brother. Yeah who taught me work ethic and the value and love for work. But the other person is my father. My father was um, one of the first architects um, with a master's degree in Uganda. And the man built buildings in Uganda. And for me, he embodied the love and value for work like no one else. So my father and my brother. Wow. And then what do you do for recreation? Oh, my goodness. I love podcasting, listening to podcasts and information. So one of the, the things I carry, like an accessory I can't live without, are my AirPods because I'm always okay, listening to stuff. I have you stopped doing those uh, recordings for us. The for a bit, yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm off social mm. media for a bit, but I'm coming back. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I'm always listening to stuff. I have, a, my car is a university. I'm always, so for me, it's rec both because of the work that I do, but also mm. it's very recreational mm. to learn from people. I'm, I'm an avid learner. Wow. What is your motto or your mantra as a husband? Oh, wow. Mm. My mantra as a husband? Yes. Loving and serving the girl that God has given me, knowing that he will hold me accountable to how I treat her. And for me, I keep that. I know that when I get into that box, I'm going to stand before a creator, and one of the things he's going to ask me, how did you treat that girl? And my family, so... Wow. I wish every husband saw things uh, like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> that should be the order of the no, day. No, <laughs> that is me, Jackie. And lastly, question number six. What was the best day in your life? Um, two best days. Okay. Number one is um, when I got married, obviously. <laughs> At yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but number two is the first day I held my firstborn daughter as a father because it was always something I, I looked up to. So I remember that day, 10th of January to 2010. Wow. I held that girl in my arms and uh, we'll never forget that day. Of course, I held many more after that, but yeah. that first day was... How many have you held so far? Are they, uh, four? four. Four. Yeah, two came Three at girls. once. Yes, yeah. yeah. Twins. You're a salon. Yeah, but the first day, it dawned on me that I had become a father. Very emotional. Yes. Every time I think about don't even... You need to oh, cut oh, the cameras. Oh, yeah, please. Otherwise, you'll bring we tissue. We need to end the show. <laughs> Yeah. First, Hassan, thank you. It's been such a pleasure sitting thank with you. Thank you for having me. And as always, there's much that we learned from you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, Jackie. Thank you My for pleasure. having me. Thank you. And we're going to have you back. We do hope that you've picked a thing or two from this conversation. And whatever you're going through in your marriage, we pray that God will see you through it. <laughs> <laughs> there's no better way for me to say this. You take care of yourself. We'll see you next week. God bless you.